years old. They would have been teammates on the 1992 Olympic team if Mosley had beaten Vernon Forrest as he was expected to do in the final of the Olympic trials. Instead, Marquez went to Barcelona, where he roomed with a fellow named Oscar De La Hoya. One and a half inch height advantage for Marquez, equal in reach at 74. They both weighed in at 154 tonight. <clears throat> Unofficially, excuse me. <clears throat> Marquez will outweigh Mosley on our HBO unofficial scale by only one pound as they go into the ring. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Shane Mosley Raul Marquez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds, non title, using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final. Final round, Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Well, after he lost to Fernando Vargas, Raul Marquez would have been justified in thinking that he would never again make the walk to the ring for a big fight on HBO television. Took a job as expert commentator on our HBO Latino broadcast. Now, as George Foreman puts it, he finds a bird's nest on the ground. That's right, and I'm telling you, he's got the size and the statue to do it if he wants it that bad. Yeah, but the bird in that nest might be an eagle, and I don't know if he wants to deal with that. You know, a lot of people think that this is uh, the U.S. against Granada, and he's Granada. Another thing, that bird is a woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> or a hummingbird when he really gets it going. There's the ring experience for Marquez. One of the knocks against him is that he bleeds leaving the dressing room. <laughs> and it looks like there's a little blood spot up by his hairline. <laughs> but yes, if, if Raul Marquez's eyes and eyebrows can hold up under the pounding of Mosley, that'll be a surprise to a lot of ringside observers. He was badly cut against Keith Mullings back in 1997. And Shane Mosley says he feels good. I feel good. There is a serious subtext to this fight, which Mosley says hasn't been a distraction. The negotiation for the rematch with Oscar De La Hoya, which has hit a real snag. Originally, Mosley agreed to take four and a quarter million dollars, which was a quarter of a million dollars less than he got for beating De La Hoya. Now he says he wants more. He has another day or two to reconsider, maybe squeeze out a few more dollars, decide whether he wants to swallow his champion's pride, take the short end, and try to beat De La Hoya again. George, it's got to be a brutally bitter pill to be asked to take 20% of the money against a guy you beat. If 20% of the money is over a million dollars, it's a lot of money. It's over four million, George. Well, that's what I meant. I, I, I'm telling you, I, li I, li I would love to take 20% and it turns out to be four million dollars. I would love it. Well, we'll see if Shane agrees to do that in the next several days. First off, he's got to get a win tonight. So let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. From the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing. This is in the junior middleweight division. Brought to you in association with IMG, along with your undisputed king of beers, Budweiser and HBO Sports. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Committee. Dr. Luther Mack, Executive Director Mark Ratner. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Carol Castellano, Keith McDonald, and Dave Moretti. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with white, he weighed in officially at 154 pounds. This 1992 U.S. Olympian now has an outstanding professional record consisting of 34 victories, including 23 knockouts against only two defeats. 
and he has captured a world title. Tonight, his plans are a return to glory. From Houston, Texas, here is the former junior middleweight champion of the world, Raul El Diamante. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold, he officially weighs 154 pounds. His professional record, 38 victories, including 35 knockouts, also with only two defeats. And he has held two world titles in two divisions. Tonight, he moves up in weight as he looks for a third world championship. From Pomona, California, presenting the former lightweight, former welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Shane Mosley. One person is Shane. Okay, gentlemen. Your chunks are high here. Any punches thrown in this area is gonna be considered a clean punch. Okay, here, okay? Chunks is okay here. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to keep the fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Touch gloves, good luck. Uh, Jim reminded you all that Marquez is a commentator on HBO Latina, so this is an opportunity for all of you who'd like to see an HBO commentator get beaten up. Yeah, but but Larry, this might not be the HBO commentator that people want to get see get beaten up. <laughs> this is a real nice guy, I can tell you that. He's one of the nicest Treats people in people the sport, Raul well. Marquez. In fact, how a terrific guy like Raul Marquez got hooked up with a clothing company named Thug Life <laughs> is one of the mysteries of the week. <laughs> It's just clothes, just clothes. That's what Raul would say, I'm sure. His plan, George, is to come in with his hands held high, work behind his defense, try to pressure Shane Mosley, and impose his power on him. What do you think of the plan? Well, you want to keep your hands high, but you got to keep your body high also. He seemed to keep his hand low, but he's dropping his head right in the range of Shane Mosley. You want to, if you're a little taller at all, take advantage of it. Stay up a little taller. That's what Marquez should be doing. There's Marquez leads with the left hand. Mosley comes back with a right down the pipe. Stop punching, There's back. a real Stop reason back, for the high hands, higher than he's ever held them before, and that's to protect his eyes, which tend to bleed easily. When he does something with his hand, he goes up a little higher and then down below his chin. So you catch a rhythm to that if you're a fighter. Sooner or later, you can get that. Work out. Up above the eye and then below the eyebrows. I mean, before the, below the cheekbone. A fighter waits until you get a nice rhythm for that. And then he goes out. When they were amateurs, Marquez outweighed Mosley by 20 pounds. In the 10 years since, Shane Mosley has gradually added what amounts to 20 pounds of muscle. A good straight left hand by Marquez momentarily stunned. Mosley. And the sharp right hand up the middle by Mosley. George, fighter adds 20 pounds of muscle during his career. Is that still his body? There we go. Uh, uh, Shane is going to have to box, but he better understand he's heavy because of it, and you can only use those legs with that extra weight so much. Marquez, whenever he lands a good shot, he's going to knock Mosley back. No, that's, 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 that's a given. This despite the fact that Mosley has been lifting 500 pounds from a squat. That's incredible power out of the legs. But of course, weightlifting power doesn't necessarily translate into the boxing no, When you're in a boxing sport, it's altogether different. Guys throw and hit at your nerves, things that you can't build up with weights. Marquez blocking Mosley's jabs. Shane's done his best damage in the round when he's gone to the body. And that's to be expected with Marquez holding the guard that high. Mosley's doing a good job of keeping his right hand up whenever that that straight left is thrown. He seems to have it in position on most watch occasions. Your heads, Come on, watch your heads now. Watch your heads. There's a hard right hand by Mosley. Marquez shaking his head as if to say, "That didn't hurt me." Sure it did. But he caught the rhythm. Too. He caught the rhythm of his head. 
dropping his hands up and down. Marquez got to keep that rhythm down. Keep your hands in position. Nice buddy punch by Marquez. Reaching under to get to Mosley's body with the left hand. Marquez is going to do something that's going to be done from the body up. Keep this from the body on up. Not head down to the body. They touch gloves after the first round. Okay. I want you to relax, though. Okay. Continue to keep your left hand to block this right jab. Okay? Here we go. You're not on your toes a little bit. I want you to get on your toes a little bit. Throw some feints. Okay. You're throwing some good, good body shots. Where's the bucket to spin in? If you step to your right, you have to throw. You listen. Okay? Okay. Deep breath. Deep breath. Whenever you throw a punch and he backs up, like you need that. to step with a frame defense. Beautiful. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm okay. okay. We're no me bajes las manos cuando tira porque no te están no te están dando nada. Okay. Okay. Punches are not going in at all. You can beat this guy, right? Oh, no. uh -huh. You heard the reference to a frame defense. That's the defense with his arms in front of his body, his fists in front of his head, like a house frame. Copy box numbers in round one. Mosley 10 out of 41 in a relatively cautious round. Marquez four out of only 32 punches thrown. Marquez seemingly trying to feel his way into the fight a little bit. And Mosley resorting more and more to the straight right hand to begin his attack as Marquez is determined to block his jab. Marquez is doing a good job of moving in with his hands up, but he should be moving his jab a little bit more. Listen to my command. Listen to my command. Watch your hands. All right, fellas, there we go. There's no jab coming from Marquez. That, you don't he make tried a fight one like and Mosley blocked it a foot away from his body. Once a fighter knows you're not going to hit him with anything, though you're coming and coming and coming, takes all kind of privileges with you. Marquez slipped in the straight left hand. That one Mosley blocks with his right. Hold it, hold it, let him up, let him up, let him up. Come on, here we go. I think the, be the fight is better for Marquez is when he keeps Shane Mosley against the ropes. I wouldn't let him have too much of the middle of the ring at all. Gives him three steps backwards, and you miss him when you throw a shot. Well, but Vernon Forrest, bigger than Mosley, was dominant when he took him to the ropes. And now Marquez gets Mosley into a corner and lands a straight left hand. Yeah, he's big. Marquez is strong. Mosley is having a tough time penetrating that defense. Again, he gets the right hand through to the body. Again, he lands nothing significant upstairs. Though it's going to take some body punching on the part of Shane Mosley to loosen that Marquez defense. Mosley has not been able to land that good left hook that he loved to fight with. Now he slips in a right hand. Marquez comes back with a straight left. Mosley in the corner again. Marquez relatively cautious oh, him, as he approaches him. I get the sense that when Marquez lands one of those left Ooh. hands, even to the gloves, it Ooh. moves Mosley a little bit. Mosley with a good left hook to the body and now a right hand underneath Marquez's guard. And that that loosens up the defense enough for Mosley to land the two straight right hands that upstairs. Mean, because once a guy gets hurt in the side, he's got to keep his hands there to protect to make certain you don't do it again. And you can get to doing something else. So there's the formula. You see Shane going straight to the solar plexus with the right hand again, trying to bring the guard down and set up something upstairs. Well, Marquez is not afraid of Shane Mosley. I can tell you that. Stop, stop, stop. I don't listen think Marquez up, is, a, is afraid of anybody. You know, he kept he, he kept going after Vargas when Vargas was just tearing him up. That's what you got to do. You want, if you're a good boxer, you want your man to follow you around, follow you around, land a shot, take a turn, and make him come into another. Marquez getting more aggressive, lands a right hand over the top. Hasn't landed anything big, but he's hunting and pecking a little better in that second round than he did in the first. Very, very, very simple. Very simple. What you're going to do. Anytime you make... Anytime you give me some head movement in the, in the pocket, Raul. Listen to my command on those brakes, okay? okay? All right, Kenny, no problem. Yes, sir. Relax. Anytime. Heart rate down. Raul. Heart rate down. Any? In there. Can't stop an ice in the Okay. Faint. Just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Use your face, Shane. Because he's looking for you to go to that body. You can faint. You can jab. You can do some things now because you're hurting him. What? 
You're really hurting him. And I think the body shot over here hurt him also. All right, there's a sign on Marquez's body that says That's the left hook that hit me may here. change things right there. It hurts, makes you readjust your defense to protect your body, bring your hands down. Okay, seconds out, let's go. Our punches in round two, those are all punches which aren't jabs, hooks, crosses, uppercuts. Marquez, six out of 28. Mosley, 11 out of 25. And most of those, those hard shots to the body that we discussed. Seizes the initiative and steps in with a straight left hand. Whenever he leaves with his straight left, Marquez is very successful. He never misses. Marquez with a right to the body after Mosley had stuck a straight right hand. There's that left hook to the body again by Mosley. Marquez with the straight left upstairs. And they bang heads. And now there's a cut over Marquez's eye. And that's the Achilles heel of Raul Marquez. And he's telling Kenny Bayless he thinks it was intentional. It was a headbutt. That was a fucking headbutt, man. Okay, let him go. Let him go. Okay, time in. Well, we agree that the cut is from let's a headbutt. Go, Come on. Keep I think the point that Marquez Come is on, trying to make go. is that it wasn't accidental. Well, that's not true. Uh, you, these guys, they're going to bump heads a lot. Anytime you Again, jump in and you're a southpaw, another right. guy likes to jump in, you're going to butt heads. That's it, George. It's a southpaw and a conventional fighter, and that happens. And Mosley landed a straight right hand down the pipe there. And the nature of Marquez's cut, the location of the cut, it will compromise his vision if his cut man isn't able to get it under control. Listen to my command. I will start deducting points if it doesn't stop right now. Understand? Understand? All right, touch gloves. Time in. From whom? For what? What point deductions? Uh, from complaining. That's all that's happening. Both guys are complaining. It's like Bayless thought it might be a knockdown for a second and then decided no. Well, it might have been a flash knockdown. Now Mosley's knocked off balance. He's going to find that Marquez is no easy fight. This guy is not a turkey. Look out! And Marquez decides it can become a street fight. Maybe that'll help him. Mosley keeps going back to the body. And Moses has done something he should have done a long time ago. Get upset. Look out! Watch out! Sit back, fellas. Let go! He's been nice. These guys have been friends all week, shaking hands, hugging. Now, all of a sudden, they realize they're in a fight. And then he upset that the other is upset. Work out, work out, work out. You want to know how, how nice Shane Mosley is? He's as angry as I've ever seen him about this monetary offer from De La Hoya for the possible fight in September. Yesterday I saw a list of Shane Mosley's five closest friends, and Oscar's still right there on the list. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, what a body shot by Mosley. Marquez is having some problems with the blood going around the eye. On, but he's been on. in it. And now another cut over the left eye, which Marquez again says is because of a butt. Headbutt again. I quit. Accidental headbutt. He takes his mouthpiece out. Look at it. And that, and that occasion. Two cuts in the round. Both as the result of accidental headbutts. Accidental headbutt, the fight has to be stopped, okay? The fight has to be stopped. The fight has, to, has be stopped. to be stopped, and that's that. Harold, what's going to happen here? Okay, Jim, believe it or not, this is a no decision. It used to be called the technical draw. Yes. Now, in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and, you, and the fight is stopped before the bell ends to end the fourth round, it's a no decision. We're in the third round, it's going to go down as a no decision as if they never fought. It's incredible. I think Mosley's over there trying to convince Shane that it, or trying to convince Raul that it was accidental. Well, I can certainly understand how it's hard 
for a guy like Marquez in his position, knowing that this was what expected, what was expected, that he would cut, it's hard for him to accept on the face of it that there was nothing or intentional about the two butts. Right, George? Nothing intentional, but it's kind of discouraging because he knows that, hey, I'm going to bleed anyway. This guy didn't open it up with a punch, I believe. He's head butt butted me. His has to be intentional. He just quit. He just quit. Here's the first head butt, George. And it well, wasn't initiated by Shane, you know. No, exactly. That was Marquez banging his head into Shane's if anything right. else. The head was right there, and Marquez banged his own head into Mosley's head. So that one, I mean, if you look at it, it's hard to imagine nope, that that was. That goes again. Now, nah, that's unintentional. Certainly, it's unintentional on Mosley's part. You know what? Marquez is a tough cookie. Too bad about that scar tissue around the eye. Tough cookie, great guy. But, you know, once you are in this position where your face cuts like that, it's hard to stop it. Boom. Oh, they both just accidentally butted here. Yeah, and that's the end, and, and Marquez walks away as if to say, what am I going to do? And here's another angle. Oh, and like Marquez pulled Mosley's head into his own. Yeah, it was just accidental, both guys. You know Marquez didn't want to butt his head. So you know, Raul's a fair-minded guy. When he sees the video, he's going to realize that, that these were unintentional. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end. The official time is 2 minutes 41 seconds of round number 3 as referee Kenny Bayless calls a halt to the action in the ring. Raul Marquez suffered a wound too difficult for him to continue. Referee stops the bout. Four rounds must be completed to go to a decision. Therefore, this contest is called no decision. begins to try to get its bearings in response to the sudden developments of round three after a couple of reasonably interesting rounds between Raul Marquez and Shane Mosley what was regarded in some circles as the inevitable began to happen the inevitable Raul Marquez bleeding unquestionably the product of two butts the video seeming to indicate George Foreman and I both agreeing <laughs> accidental headbutts. Yeah. No, no idea. there was nothing intentional about it they both just happen to run into their heads. Soft paws and conventional fighter that happens all the time. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Well, the fans are very unhappy the fight was stopped. Could you have gone on? Well, I mean, hey, I got to leave it up to the referee. I was cut above both eyes. I mean, the doctor, he stopped it. I wanted to keep going. You know me, I'm a warrior. I, I think I was fighting the right fight. He never hit me with a clean shot where I was hurt. And... Uh, I won at the fight, man. I, I think I was in the fight. I was getting better. That was a, the, 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 the style that we were using to get to him, and you saw I was getting to him. Did you believe that either or both of those fights was deliberate, those uh, butts were deliberate? One. one of them was. One of them was. The f the, you mean the first one? The first one, yeah. All right, let's, even said, let's on, take man. a look at it, and you tell me what you see uh, as we get this up on the monitor. Well, I'm trying to work myself in, and boom. I mean, he, he comes in. You know what, Larry? I mean, now that I look at it, you know. You're a fight. You're I'm, a, I'm an analyst. Now you're, you're an analyst. Lefty righties, lefty righties, I mean. Okay, so you're. come together. You're a fight. You're a fight analyst. Here's the same thing. Both of you were coming, lefty righty. Oh, yeah. right there. He was coming. I was coming. We banged heads. I All mean. right. So, so you're withdrawing the, the accusation that it was deliberate, and you see now that it was well, an accident. Well, you know, when you're in there, it's different. He told me, Raul, you know the first one? I did it accidentally. I mean, the, the first one was, you know, he, I guess he meant it. The second one was an accidental. So, you know, hey, now that we see it on the screen, it's different. But you know what? We could do it again. I thought he was, I was in the fight. We'd do it again. All right, let's take a look at the second butt. Now, on this occasion, you're coming to him again. Ooh. Lefty, righty. We hit heads again. We hit heads again. And you have been known to bleed. Well, I've been known this to is, cut, what, this bleed. Is, this, is, um, this is an Achilles heel of yours. It is, but you know what? I, my, my main concern is that we didn't, I didn't cut from a punch. It was headbutts. You know, he hit me with 
some shots. All right, do you feel, regardless of whether you ever fight Shane Mosley again or not, do you feel after almost three rounds that you did well enough to keep fighting? Absolutely. I think so. I mean, I think I was in the fight. I think uh, I was very surprised that that I was very surprised uh, of, of Shane's uh, speed is not what I thought it would be. And uh, I was a stronger guy in there. He said, man, you're strong. He was backing up. I was the stronger guy, and I landed good punches, too. Thank you very much, Ralph. Thank you. Jim, just one moment now. We're going to talk to Shane Mosley. Yes. All right. Shane, um, when he accused you of a deliberate butt, did you just think that was something in the heat of battle, or did you think that he was just frustrated or what? He was a little frustrated, I think, because he's southpaw and the way he fights. Not because most southpaws are are more leaning back, and he was more on his uh, front leg, and, and he'll dive in with the straight left, and he'll lead with his head first. All right, and let's take let's take a look at it on the monitor from right. your point of view of the first butt, which really was the most important one. Wow! See, now that, that was a headbutt that he did on me. I mean, he can, the way he the way he throws his punches, he comes right into me with the headbutt, and uh, he, you know he didn't do it on purpose. It's just, that's just the way he fights. And, and, and it stopped him at the fight. See, I'm coming in, he's coming in, and we're both trying to get the shots off, and he just keeps hitting me with the, you know, with the head. And he uh, thinks that I'm, he, he thought that I was hitting him with the head, but I said, no, you're hitting me with the head, but. All right. <laughs> All right, a couple of things then. Um, you moved up to 54, you fought a guy who was a strong, natural 154 pounder. What did you feel in there? Well, I mean, I didn't feel, um, much difference. It felt the same to me. It's just like a welterweight fight. Um, you know, Raul has been laid off for a little while, so he, I don't think he's the strongest, the strongest uh, junior middleweight that I'll probably ever face. But, uh, you know, I mean, he came to fight. He worked out for a good two, three months. He got trimmed his way down. He fought a couple of fights in 168, so he's coming down. So I guess, you know, he, he was pretty strong for, for uh, that. You haven't won a fight now in a year and a half. How frustrating is this for you? Well, it's a little frustrating, but, you know, I, I consider this fight a win because I know that he was on his way to uh, going out. I mean, even though he was very courageous and everything, he wanted to fight, but he was on his way. Uh, I was on my way to, to catch him with a good shot. I was breaking him down with the body shots, and he was just about ready to go. All right, let's talk now about the future, the Oscar De La Hoya negotiations. You've said you are not going to accept the sum of, of, of four and a quarter million dollars, which represents a 75-25 split in his favor, in which De La Hoya would get 12 million dollars. Are you standing on that as a matter of your pride, that if that's the final offer, this is an absolute no? Well, I mean, I was told that there was 20 million dollars in the pot, and if De La Hoya is getting 12 and they want me to have four, then where's the other four million? Well, the promoter wants, wants <laughs> to get paid, too. Me? Well, I mean, the promoter can't get his, what, what I get. You know, I'm the fighter. You know, so I, I don't know what to say about that. All right. <laughs> We're looking now at the possibility that Oscar De La Hoya could fight uh, a rematch with Vargas. There are reports, a little stronger than rumors, that Trinidad is seriously thinking of coming out of retirement. That could put Oscar De La Hoya off your party list for a long, long time. Will this enter into your final decision? Well, I, the way I look at it, uh, Larry, is, you know, I'm the last guy to beat De La Hoya, and De La Hoya wants greatness, so he wants to fight me. He wants to fight Sugar Shane. Uh, he came knocking on my door, saying that he wanted to fight me. You know, at least be uh, generous, be a little courteous, and uh, don't be so rude about, uh, you know, offering me these, this chump change. Sugar <laughs> Shane! Four million is a lot of chump change. Well, yeah, if not when you get four and a half for the first time you fought him when I beat him. So you feel that you, in your business situation, you could walk away from this, fight other junior middleweights, and just let it happen down the road? I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm, making, uh, I'm making good money on each fight. You know, I'm still a house on name fans. You, you can see there's a lot of people here to come to watch Sugar Shane fight. So I still draw a pretty good crowd.